Right. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a, a matter of uh, going with the flow and doing what the Spirit says to do each day. You know, if you do more than what, what God says, then you're likely to get worn out and tired. If you do what he says, you're likely to have all the resources you need to do what he's calling you to do. And I, I hold him to that, you know, in the day he's promised. Um, and you must we've got to hold him to his promises. You know, if we seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, he needs to deal with all the rest of the stuff. So, um, yes. you know, so, yeah. So is there anything, anything you want to share today or talk about or...? Um, well, I do have a question, and um, yeah, I I can I can share something as well. One thing is when I first started learning to go into the heavenlies, I um, and and I went to the dance floor. It was just like I was so nervous that. I would be trying to lead. <laughs> and so now, now I've relaxed in it and I let Jesus lead now. But how awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, you must have an issue going on here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a, that's a good, um, you know, I'm, I'm making progress in that area, but in other ways, I realize that um, these sessions are, are 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 bringing a an explanation to some things that I did in previous years. Yeah. Like I used to just lay out before the Lord, and um, for about a year, year and a half, just lay before Him for about an hour, hour and a half not do anything and um, you know I would um, I would be transported somewhere but I never knew exactly where I was but there was a work it was just like there was there was um, he was doing such a heavy work in my heart that at times you know it 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 um, it, it, it hurt you know, I mean, it wasn't a terrible hurt, but it felt like a very deep cleansing work going on. And um, I would always get cold in these whenever I went into that area. So I asked the Lord one time, I said, why am I getting, why do I get so cold? And Because I'd have to take my blanket with me <laughs> whenever I went to go lay before him. And, and the thing he told me at that time, he says, the slab that the sacrifice lays on is always cold. Mm -hmm. And so now as we're coming into and we're talking about the temple, the outer court, the inner court, and just approaching the Holy of Holies, laying, you know, being that living sacrifice, well, I, I, I kind of knew what I was doing, but now the picture is getting bigger. And so now I recognize what I was doing. And um, so um, it, it, it's, it's amazing how the Spirit will lead us to do certain things, not really knowing what we're doing. But this is like an education on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's right. I mean, <clears throat> a lot of people have been on a journey for a long time because they've been responding to what's come out of the heaven and this drawing, this sound, this frequency, if you like, <clears throat> which is drawing people. People have been responding it even before they knew what it was. Uh, and just like that example, you know, soaking in the presence of God, um, just be open for wait before him and so that he would he'd be doing things even if we didn't know and preparing for things now that have become open and real and, and so we can see them. You know, and it is it's an important thing to realize that most people have been on this journey for quite a long time. You know, we, we went around the wilderness and for a long time, forty years they went around. And and I think, you know, there's been there's been a lot of going round and round in preparation for going across, you know, and 
we're on the verge, I think, of going across into something new. But you know, it's going to come a time where we have to leave behind the old then and and step over into that which is new. Um, yeah. But it is a you know, it's a good it's a good illustration because I think a lot of people aren't sure, but we have to trust. You know, when God took me through a dark period of uh, you know four months of not being able to see or to to really engage had I been used to, it was all about developing trust. Would I trust him when I didn't know what he was doing? But Abraham wouldn't have got too far if he basically said, well, I'm not going until I got all the instructions. But he was told to go, leave everything behind and go and pursue. You know, and that's what faith really is, isn't it, in a sense. Sometimes it's like we just have to trust and step out and do what God is saying, even though we don't understand. Because obedience is not really about understanding. It's about a choice to right. surrender to what God says, irrespective of whether we understand it or not. You know, but we're used to wanting to know before we do something. And, of course, we're taught how to do that. You know, weigh up the pros and cons, make a logical decision. Yeah, we're taught how to make decisions based on evidence. But actually, we need to realize that we need to make decisions based on our intuition uh, with peace. You know, and that that's a different thing altogether. And so, when God asks me to do something, you know, I'm not going to ask Him 20 questions. You know, because it might my life might depend on it. And actually, in in my, I remember a story from my past when I was in the garden and I was plug, I plugged in a a cable for a lawnmower or something, and I was just feeding the cable out, and and a voice came into my head and said stop. Uh, and I and I I listened to it and I stopped. And when I looked at the next part of the cable, some sort of rat or mouse or something had chewed all the all the wires open, and literally they would have been live wires. You know, and so just by recognizing that, hey, stop uh, and being obedient, I'm still here. Because if I wasn't, I would have grabbed hold of a live electric cable. You know, um, and so sometimes actually, you know, it's like the. the it's, I think it says in in Hebrews, I think Jesus learned obedience. You know, and it's like, well, how did he learn obedience? Well, I guess he just learned to say yes quicker, maybe. Which is what we we need to learn to do, you know. Is once we recognise the voice of God, is to respond without the oh well, I've got to go through the twenty questions and the check up, and I need to make sure this is God. Now my spirit and the peace that rules there as an umpire over my life will should lead me, and really that's that's my conscience. My conscience is there to guard and and to guide. Most people think of their conscience as a negative thing. Well, it'll it, it will prick me if I'm going to do something wrong. But actually, it's a very positive thing, and it will guide us into those things which will bring glory to God. You know, so it will help us and lead us. But we need to learn to respond to it uh, quickly, really. Um, but I guess the more you're familiar in relationship with God, the more you're sensitive to His voice. Because a lot of people say, well, "How do I tell whether that's my voice or?" Is God's voice or the enemy's voice? Well, the more time you spend with God, the more you recognize his voice. You know, and, and you, you don't have to think about it then because it, you're in relationship and you're talking with him. You know, uh, but it takes time to develop relationship, and so we have to be really willing to pursue it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. I remember a time like that. I was in the shed. Um, and I had some boxes out there and uh, all of a sudden it was just like I got the same prompting to stop and um, I looked when when I looked late uh, looked a little further but more carefully um, there there was a whole nest of fire ants in that box right all right yeah, yeah. so that that could have very well hurt <laughs> yep, <laughs> may well have done. Yeah. <laughs> I was curious, uh, when we go into the courts, who can we expect to see at the various courts? Okay. Um, well, in terms of the 
court of accusation or the mobile court that we get to convene because it's mobile and the throne of you know when you read in Ezekiel about the throne of God on the wheels within wheels God's throne came from uh, and is mobile to move to where we are um, so we can convene that court you would expect in that court to have God the sort of on the throne as a judge Jesus as an advocate sometimes you do get angels there uh, in terms of witnesses um, and and the enemy essentially whatever our accuser now I often I mean I don't look at the accuser I'm, I'm not really interested in what he's got to look like I mean I but I'm interested in, in getting him to to uh, release the whatever the accusations are but often he is cowering in the corner in the dark, trying to hide from the light. You know, not comfortable being in the light. But obviously, being brought before the throne there, in that way, you know. That. So sometimes familiar spirits that are there that accuse us. So that's generally what I what I've seen in that court. Sometimes you do get um, uh, one of the seven spirits of God. Different different things who are there on your behalf, I guess. Um, in the court of angels, basically you get ranks and ranks and ranks of angels, different different sorts, different types of angels, different angelic orders, but they're there so you can present mandates and they recognize authority in scrolls and then their, their assignments are given there. Um, the court of uh, chancellors, I found that there usually there's a bench um, and I normally see four chancellors there um, when I go and present um, uh, a mandate for authorization there's often um, a sense that some of the men in white linen show up there when they when they get a sniff of a, of a mandate that's connected to them so they show up um, Everything in heaven's all connected, so they know everything that's going on. You know, it, it's like they they know because heaven is a thought a construct, if you like, in the sense it's it's constructed from the thoughts of God, and and therefore that consciousness is is connected to people there. Um, um, so you know, that's there in the court of of the upright. Basically, yeah, I've seen the men in white linen. That looks like oh, it looks like a sort of oh, difficult to describe. I don't like to describe what it is exactly because people need to to engage themselves, mm -hmm. and what they see will relate to something that will help them to engage and understand. And it can appear different at different times. You know, um, I've been to the court of the councils of the fathers. There, I saw the father on the throne, and two sets of twenty of uh, twelve thrones on either side. One from you know the twelve el uh, two lots of twelve elders basically. Um, that's what that's what I saw there, and I know that they were relating to something that was what God was trying to communicate with me. <laughs> Court of Kings. Well, that was an interesting thing because I I was on the other side of the bench there, so it was me sat down in my role as a king. So oh. so that that would be occupied by people who are fulfilling the function of kingship. Um, I I wasn't really looking around. I was just looking at this scroll in front of me and birthing something out of that was written on the scroll. So um, I have been to there and taken groups of people in there. We've gone in to get, as our leaders, and I, I guess there are other things that go on there, but that's what I've engaged there. The court of scribes, um, is what that describes. You know, it, it, it scribes writing a record of everything that goes on. So any encounter that you have is written and recorded. You can go back and look at it. So there's loads and loads of scrolls that get put into record there that they write. Um, Galactic Council, it's so bright and so different dimension there. You know, I did I did see the, the 70 sat um, in authority. Court of War, Court of Strategy Court, often that 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 to me has appeared like a big table um, that you can go and present things and receive strategy that's being agreed and worked out. Um, and there are um, 
again, different different categories of angels that engage there. You know, it's difficult. We we sort of generically say angels, don't we? But they're they're really just spiritual being created spiritual beings. Um, I think some of where we're going in a lot of this, in maturing to positions of authority, we will get to access some of these things. When when people here begin to engage their uh, chancellorship, um, if they've been given a seal of chancellorship, they actually get to sit with the chancellors and begin to make decisions. You know, and they were entrusted with decision making on authorization of things. Um, and I think also with the Court of War, the Strategy Court, it's like, you know, we should be sat around there with others strategizing as a bench of three or benches of three or councils of around the world, strategizing about how we uh, expand the kingdom and how we take this territory, how we, what's the strategy for uh, administering here. And I think those are some of the things we will get to do in the future because I think we'll be much more actively in tune to what's going on and as we learn to mature we'll learn to uh, see what our roles are you know I, I've gr some of my things have grown from where you know I first accessed the mobile court I didn't really understand that there were loads of other courts at that point um, but those things have opened up you know the, the, one of the, the key places to learn to engage in governmental things is in is with wisdom on wisdom's heights because according to Proverbs 8 you know she really is there to help kings rule and princes rule and nobles rule so, so she very much has insight and revelation into government and into the protocols of certain courts uh, that we need to understand you know um, so yeah there's lots of there's lots of um, ways I think that you can engage there depending on what you're called to do and you know and as you go forward and I think people will see it differently you know because it is it is designed for us to to engage in a way that we will have some sort of engagement with revelation there um, and so it may well appear different to different people in different circumstances you know, and sometimes it has been different when I've gone back, because I've gone back to do something different, and therefore I felt differently about the protocol because I've been more used to knowing what to do and to release my a mandate or to release a scroll for authorization or those things. Um, you know. So yeah, lots of different structures. You know, there's a couple of courts that I've not been in, um, so I don't really know there, but. Uh, you know, but there's always opportunity to explore, and wisdom will take you and show you protocol if you ask. Um, really, so yeah. So was that? Was there anything specific on that? Um. No, I was just. Um, no, I was just wondering. Um, you know, you feel like you're going into certain places, but you're not for sure. Yeah. Um, you question yourself, and I think part of the whole experience is just to relax. Absolutely. And yeah. Allow wisdom. You know, approach wisdom, and 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 allow her to, uh, which which you know, I've I haven't met wisdom, uh, but but. You know, it's like on the dance floor. You know, I, I was so kind of nervous about it. So I, I, you know, I think it's just, um, you know, I, I'm dealing with these earthly emotions while trying to have a heavenly experience. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, I think uh, even in even in a physical sense, when we relax, the right side of our brain is more active. And literally, when we when we begin to close our eyes and we begin to to enter into sort of a meditative, reflective place, then actually our brain waves begin to slow down and they engage alpha state, which is a slower state, which is easier to tune into the spiritual 
frequencies there, whereas the beta state is where you know we're problem solving, very left brain, needing to figure things out, and which is nothing wrong with that when we need to do it, but we don't need to engage reason or intellectual uh, logic when we're engaging in this realm of the spirit because we need to receive it by spiritual revelation and experience not just intellectual knowledge not that our minds aren't involved they're just not in charge um, you know and I, I would always encourage people to journal everything and don't try and interpret or try and figure out what's going on in the encounter just experience the encounter to its fulfillment and then journal it because that means you can then go back over it you can revisit it um, you can meditate around it and you can get further revelation because if you don't understand everything that you received the first time then go back you know and actually ask you know I often take revelation of encounters I take them to my garden and I sit in the green pasture with Jesus, the shepherd, and I just talked to him about it. You know, what did you mean by that? What was the significance of that? You know, what 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 did those colors mean? You know, what was I actually experiencing when that was going on? And just talk to him about it, because this is that's that's the purpose of the garden of our heart to develop an intimate, secret place where we can talk to God about everything. You know, and I think sometimes we're we're well, we, we like the shortcut and the instant thing, so it's easy to ask somebody else, you know. So I, I, you know, I don't, I try not to interpret things for people, you know, because I can, but it's, people can go to God themselves, and that's what I want to encourage. If I can hear God, okay, I might carry a wealth of scriptural background and foundation and symbolism comes easy to me as a result of, spending a lot of time with it with it and engagement but in, in a sense it's your symbol that counts not mine you know what something means to me may not mean the same to you and God may be using something that will be very unique and specific to you which is why it's a personal relationship you know and, and I encourage people to say look if you're unsure of something just go and ask God about it and expect him to give you revelation that you need you know, he's, he's not trying to be awkward, but he does want us to be dependent in our relationship. So we can't do it on our own uh, in independence, you know. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's always good to, to ask God when we need to understand something, you know. Because ultimately what we want to do is be constantly connected to a flow of life and constantly connected to the flow of heaven and be living there and here. Then we have to get used to our spirit communicating to us um, in a way which we can understand quickly and easily. Um, and we have to build that understanding up by spending time practicing, listening and watching and seeing and engaging and then beginning to work it out. You know. Um, but it is much easier when you are not striving or struggling or feeling, oh, I have to get into this place. And you know, at the end of the day, everyone can step in by faith because God will respond to faith. And even though some people, well, I didn't feel anything or I didn't really see anything, that's say, well, okay, but by faith, God will have received you. You just have to need to actually accept that and then look to again relax and just begin to sense things you know try and sense is it different am I feeling different here I've stepped into the realm of heaven what do I feel am I feeling different is there say if I breathe in the atmosphere will I feel different when I breathe it in just just have have us that sense of re relaxing in the exploration of it and you know it will get deeper and it will become more easy to tune in the more you practice, right. you know, and people who say, "Well, I just can't see anything in my imagination." Well, no, the reality is that's a lie. They can. They're just not used to switching into seeing that dimension in their imagination because everyone can use their imagination to picture or frame things. We do it all the time, you know. Um, 
So everyone can, you know, everyone can close their eyes and picture a red car. And they'll probably see one. They may see it in full-blown Technicolor as it goes down the road in a vision, or they may just see a picture, a still picture, or they may just get the impression of what it is, but actually there's something they can connect to. And it's learning to begin to tune into those things, those glimpses, those fleeting things that sometimes we dismiss. Now, so I encourage people when they um, when they're looking to try and explore seeing and engaging the spirit realm to just pick up those little things that may be glimpses in the corner of their eye and turn to look into them rather than just ignoring the little things that happen because then we miss some of the the glimpses that God is given so that we can step through that glimpse into something fuller because we just dismissed it. So we have to learn to turn from what we're looking at to turn to what God wants to show us and that means you know sometimes it's actually turning and that's why he gives us things in the corner of our eye at times to see whether we're willing to stop what we're doing to focus on something he's trying to show us um, and I, and that's a really good thing to do because it's like oh what was that I'm just gonna I'm just gonna look I'm gonna close my eyes well what was that I was was God trying to show me something and then just begin to meditate and okay and something may be clarified. It might be a, a thought or a voice or a picture or an experience of something. Um, you know, which is just little simple little things that we can just learn to practically do to help in the journey of engagement. You know, um, you know, 90% of the time, my spirit, when I step into the realm, my spirit knows where I am or what I'm doing. And it communicates to me where I am and what I'm doing, for me, often in description. So I know, I just know where I am, and I can describe where I am if you ask me, but I'm not actually necessarily always visually seeing it as a picture, but it's just as good, because that's how my spirit communicates to me. You know, it may be different for other people. Other people may actually, actually have a visual thing, and at times, usually, when I engage something new, often it is visual because you know God gets my attention, and it's like, oh wow, this is this is different, you know. But then when I re-engage it, I know I can step back into those places by faith, um, and I can my spirit will engage there, even though not always am I seeing it as a visual impression, but actually it is still a very clear knowing of where I am and knowing what's there and knowing what's going on. You know, and and I'm seeing, I'm perceiving. You know, because sight is perception. You know, so my perception of where I am is being revealed by my spirit. You know, always through a, an image. You know, although you know, as I say, you know, I I can very easily just turn it into an image by turning on the description and picture it. But I don't need to. You know, I don't I don't need to. Um, specifically do that because I'm very comfortable in engaging and knowing where I am and, and not working it. Uh, yeah. I know my intimacy level with the Lord has really increased in all of this since going to the garden and um, just spending that time that before a lot of it was done by faith you know, um, it it was a relationship, but now it's more intimate. It's 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 now I see now I talk to him face to face versus at a distance by faith. You yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but you know, we have to start somewhere. You know, and and faith is always the best place to start because God always rewards those who seek Him by faith. You know, he's a rewarder of those who seek him by faith. So, you know, and I know people struggle. Oh well, I'm 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 just doing it, and I'm not really really engaging in it. Well, okay, we'll just start there, but it will get different as you continue to practice, rather than oh, I'm going to give up because I just can't see anything. You know, and let's engage all our senses to experience something. It may be emotions, it may be feelings, 
it may be that sense of deep peace or just knowing the security of being close you know rather than just full blown technicolor vision of first person being there you know but that does come and you know sometimes it's like you read the scripture it came in different ways you know paul there was this light appeared in front of him which was so bright he ended up blind you know peter fell in a trance and this vision came down of a sheet coming down to heaven and he was in a trance you know Stephen was looking up into an open heaven while they were stoning him and looking into heaven from here so he was and the same happened with John you know in the first few chapters of John John was looking into a vision from here and seeing what it looked like in a vision then he was invited to step into the vision and come and participate two different ways but we don't separate oh revelation 1 and 2 and 3 or whatever so oh well that's not really revelation because John wasn't there we just see it he wrote what he saw in a vision from here then he was invited to step up and go into that vision and then he began to write what he was actually experiencing you know um, and so we just need to do need to relax and don't fret over it or strive for one particular area because I know people have said it to me well when I see it then I will I'll really know it's true well that's not exactly faith is it <laughs> 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 Thomas, Thomas got a rebuke for having that attitude. It was called yeah. doubt and unbelief. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> Prove it to me. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and that doubt and unbelief is never actually going to uh, produce fruit, you know. And we've got to we've got to check our mindsets in these things because, you know, doubt and unbelief will always hinder and block us from stepping into the reality of something yeah you know? and I and I think that it's a journey it's not it's not a, a an in, a, just a destination and something that happens it's a journey of discovery that we're on and as long as we're pursuing the journey things will develop and to grow and our spirit will begin to be bigger and stronger and the, <laughs> it senses we're more in tune with um, but it goes together, you know. If someone's got a, a, a an imagination that's polluted by, you know, watching horror films for years and different things, and then they want to well, want to step in and see heaven, well, until you cleanse that imagination from all the junk that's been put in there, there isn't much room for developing anything really good. So we've we've got to see it as a journey, not not just an, a push the button and oh I'm going to get every instant thing all in one go because it never works that way. You know, even when I did have, you know, encounter upon encounter, you know, I was I was a forerunner in a sense, and and I'd been on, you know, I'd been on a fast for 19 days before, you know. Now, you know, if people want to do that, then maybe they will get those sort of encounters. But if people just want to practice and learn, then you just practice and learn, and it becomes clearer and clearer as you go. Um, you know. So yeah, I, mean, I think um, people do need to relax, um, without a doubt. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, well, I certainly I... appreciate you paving the way, <laughs> and those you know others who have paved the way, yeah. um, because I was at a point to where um, I knew there was more. I, I, you know, you don't always know the next step until you know. I prayed and I said, God, you gotta, you gotta give me my teachers. You've got to show me my teachers. And um, then, um, as I discovered you and Ian and different ones, the excitement in my spirit started to build again. It was like an awakening. Okay, this is that that you have prayed for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of people, they're not they're not really sure what they're asking for, and some people don't recognize it when it comes. But you know, if our spirit is tuned in, then there should be that leap in our spirit. That wow, yeah. Even though you know it may not be fully formed, there'll be a knowing. Yeah, 
this this is it. I'm on the right track. I'm I'm on the right pathway um, for that engagement. You know. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's good. So you obviously exciting. <laughs> yeah, well, it is. Yeah, it is exciting. You know, and you've obviously, you know, you pay the cost. You know, lying cold on a slab, uh, soaking, looking to see God do something. That's a cost. You know, and you, and you know, God God honors those sacrifices. You know, you may not have realized what the end result fully was, but you knew there was something that was just drawing you to something deeper, something more. You know, and those who are actually willing to pay the cost to end up with no genealogy and the enemy having nothing in us will be walking in the order of Melchizedek. You know, and not everyone is willing to pay the cost. You know, Jesus presented that cost to the disciples of his day and challenged them. I mean, I think most people think Jesus said, oh, only lovely things. When you read most of if you get a red letter Bible and you read most of his actual statements, some of them were pretty direct and pretty straight. You know, there weren't too many nicey nicey things. You know, they were very straight and direct because he was speaking with authority and power. You know, so you know, it is it is important to to tune in to what he's saying and to, to go with that flow. You know, and, and be open to going deeper and paying the cost. You know, he, he said, you, know, you can't follow me unless you're willing to give up everything. You know, well, that's what they did, of course, when they followed him. They left whatever they were doing. Matthew was a tax collector, and Peter and James and John with their nets, and they just left it and walked after it. You know, it was literally, what is it that we need to leave? And effectively, it's everything, isn't it? You know, in terms of the uh, the affections of our heart in comparison to him. Because again, he said statements like, "Well, if you don't hate your family, in comparison to your love for me, well, then you can't be my disciple." You know, deny yourself, take up the cross, and follow me daily, sort of thing. And it's like, "Ooh, those are all challenges." Mm -hmm. you know, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you can't follow me. And it's like, "Ooh," and then that put off virtually everybody who was following him because they didn't understand he was talking about life and embracing life uh, and embracing everlasting life in, in effect by taking on his DNA and being transformed and stepping into him and those things you know so Jesus really made it a challenge to follow him you know don't put your hand to the plow if you're gonna look back because you'll just be weaving all over the place because you won't be looking for where God is taking you, you know. You know, if you're not, if you haven't got enough thing to finish to finish building the tower, don't start. Right. Because right. actually, all you'll do is use all your resources, and you won't have any end result, you know. And so, I think in following Jesus, we've we've got to realize that He is challenging us to a whole surrender of life. You know, He who loses His life will find it and he who keep, tries to keep it will lose it and so it's like okay let's surrender you know but that's a cost you know and you've obviously been on a journey paying that cost and then you begin to bear fruit that comes out of that desire that's within your heart for more and that desire for a deeper intimacy that desire to know your destiny and to pursue it you know because it all begins just to flow out of that relationship that we're willing to sacrifice for and some people obviously don't you know and they wonder well why why am I having the experiences that you've got and why can't I do these things well you know follow the last 20 30 years of my life and maybe you will you know but as a forerunner you can break through into something and then help people come through quicker which is my desire and my my goal is to open the doors for people to go through and go further and then they can share stuff with me and help me to go further you know um, but nothing nothing is worthless you know it's like G David said I'm not gonna sacrifice an animal that's the the worthless animal I'm gonna give him the best you know and that's really needs to be the desire of our heart I'm gonna give him the best I'm gonna give him everything of me 
I'm not holding anything back. You know, but with that attitude, then you will engage. You will find what you're looking for. You know, if you're willing to pursue it. I mean, I've had to pursue things in my life because nothing's come easy for me. You know, and I, and that was because God designed it that way. Because then, if I can do it, then anyone can do it. Yeah. You know, coming from an extremely logical, scientific, left brain background <laughs> was not the best starting point. You know, but actually, I've learned to overcome that by perseverance. You know, when it when I read in the Word about baptism in the Spirit and speaking in tongues, I knew nobody in my hometown who would ever experience that at all. You know, and I was in a brethren church that didn't believe in it, um, so I was just not starting from a good place. You know, in in the town I was brought up in, there was no there was there was not a church that baptized people. In, by immersion, none. Until I I saw it, and I, I went up to 12 miles up the road and got baptized, and it was just like, that opened the door, and eventually we had a baptistry in our brethren church. Because there was a door open, because I was willing to pursue it, you know, and I wasn't going to give in until I got it. Three years it took me to get baptized in the Spirit and speak in tongues, and I did everything I could in those three years. I pursued it. I read every book I could get my hands on. You know, I I did all the exercises that they said in the book, and it was just like nothing. <laughs> you know, I tried everything, and that was I mean, when I look back, some of the stupid things I did to try and speak in tongues. You know, people say, "Well, you just need to prime the pump," you know, and say banana backwards, or. You know. <laughs> I I do I do find it amusing now. I look back. I was not, not going to give up. You know, I was not going to give up because I knew that was something which was the key for my life. And I've done that all the way along, you know. It's not been easy, but I've been pursuing something because I knew I hadn't found what I was looking for. I knew I hadn't had the reality of what the Word of God even said, let alone anything beyond that. So I've, I wanted it. I pursued it. I've sought it with all my heart. And that's cost. You know, it's cost me. You know, I've had to spend, you know, hours and hours and hours. But it's a delight. You know, now there's no cost involved. It's just that's the delight of my heart. You know, I I, I didn't want to get up early and spend time with God. You know, it was my flesh didn't want to do it. But I disciplined my flesh by making a choice and then pursuing it and pursuing it until my flesh gave in. You know, now. My soul wants to spend time with God, so there's no issue. You know, but it took years to get over. I'd rather stay in bed and oh, I pull the covers up and it's cold rather than getting up and going down and spending time. But I pushed through that. I developed it because it always made sense to me. What did Jesus do? Well, he got up early in the morning and he gave the best of his time with God. So it's like, well, I want to give God my best, and that's not when I'm really, really tired at the end of the day. It's actually at the beginning when I can get revelation for the day and a mandate for the day, and he can tr teach me for the day. But I didn't want to do that. You know, I didn't want to do it, but actually I chose to follow Jesus and his example so I could do it. You know, and it, it eventually I, my soul gave in and I want to do it, you know. Mm -hmm. but, but it's not easy, you know, but you have to be willing to pay the cost pursue something of great value. Uh, it's like the pearl of great price. If if you value something, you will pursue it. You know, and that's that's what happens with our relationship with God. If we value it, we will pursue it. And you can look at what we are pursuing in our lives to show what what level of value we put on things. Because the the one that gets the, the premium priority time is usually the thing that we value the most. So where does our relationship with God and spending intimate time with Him come in the pecking order of what we do every day. You know, and and everyone's got the same amount of time each day, 24 hours. Everyone's got the same amount of time. Yes, we may well be able to expand some of that in the kingdom and engage things that make it stretch, but the reality is we've got the same number of physical hours. We get to choose what we do with them. You know, my physical body requires 
you know, five or six hours of sleep now because I've trained it to not need any more. So, so I can get up early in the morning and spend that time with him in the morning, you know. But it needed training to do it. <clears throat> Just seemed to me that actually the cost was worth paying, you know. Um, so, yeah, there we go. <laughs> well, I know when, when uh, and he lets us know uh, what we need to do. It's like whenever I would lay before him. Um, I knew that therefore a season that's what I needed to do because the work that I could feel going on in my heart uh, was still very strong but as time went on as the year came to an end and going into the next time next year I didn't feel that deep work anymore and and so it was just like you know, do I still lay myself as a living sacrifice? Yes, but it's not as it's not that season anymore. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I I still do that every day, but the time I take to do it now because of the pathways established in me can be, you know, a minute or sometimes less. But I <laughs> always give God the opportunity to search my heart and to show me if there's anything he wants to do so he can prepare me to, to do his will today. You know, I'm always open, I'm always going to go through the cross and I'm dead to self, I'm alive to him, you know, but you know, it would take me 45 minutes to go through the outer court and the inner court into the holy place and the holy holy. So it's like, because I was developing the pathway and growing in it and learning to engage and, and open my heart and in that process, God had to deal with iniquity and layers of behavior and then thoughts and intentions of the heart because I, I pursued it. But now he he does that when he wants to, you know, and when he, when he, when I, but I'm open all the time, you know, for it, but it's easier now, as you say, you know, once you've, once you've put the time in, everything becomes easier but no less more valuable because you just learn to see how valuable it is because you've experienced what you were longing for you know and pursuing that desire is what it's about and sometimes people haven't cultivated that desire yet that will overcome the inertia of their soul because they've not spent time looking and beholding and fixing their eyes on him who's the author and finisher of our faith he's the end in the beginning and when we engage him, we bring the end into the present and the beginning into the present and actually see a manifestation of the fullness of who we are in God. Um, yeah, that's a, another story. Mm. Okay, well, it's been nice hanging out. Uh, I think we'll, we'll leave it there. We need to, uh, got, I'm sort of preparing for these groups now and... Uh, Realizing that I've got a lot of uh, a lot to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but it's all good. You know. uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. So. Well, like you said, you may have to combine some groups. Well, yeah, I, I you know once once I've you know once I see um, where things are, then yeah, I'll be able to engage in it easier. In knowing exactly where I stand, because at the minute I've got probably 130, 140 people have applied for these groups. So, um, you know, and I don't want to exclude anybody at this stage now. So I'm going to have to find a way of engaging with 130, 40 people every couple of weeks. So. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll, and God has a way and a plan, so I'm sure we'll be able to find it. So. Now, now, if I understand you correctly on this, um, you will help us train others. It shows as as we go along. Well, the the purpose will be is, is to follow these pathways from the beginning. Even though, yeah, I really, it's to it's to equip equip this generation to come and to be part of it. Really, um, uh, and I think that that's going to take you know, a systematic process, so that we can take anybody from scratch right through it. 
So really what it is, it's about developing the material that people can engage with. And so, you know, the exercises, the practice, all the background information, everything people would need to go from, you know, I, I want a relationship with God of intimacy to following that pathway into heaven and then fully engaging with the, their authority in the kingdom. So it, it will be following those two pathways um, so that anyone can teach other people to do it. That's, that's, that's the key. Mm -hmm. I have um, I what I've I've sort of recorded a a shortish video this morning, just spelling out the strategy for the groups, what what it is, so that everyone will know before they make a final commitment to it that this is what this is what it's about and this is what what it's going to be for. Um, and once I've got the last few applications in, uh, I'll just give the link to that to everyone who's applied, just to let people know. That look, this is this is what the strategy is. This is what God has shown us, and we want to be upfront about that at the beginning and be transparent about where we're going with it. Um, you know, there may be people who, who, in this initial stage, just want to develop their own personal walk with God, which is great, and they may not feel at the place where they can mentor anyone else yet, and that's great, that's fine. But there are people already who've got groups, people who are leading churches who want to engage this. And there are also people who I think know that they're called to be part of this Joshua generation and mentor others, um, who will go into it seeing that, you know. And the reason for going through the basics of building our spirit is so we can help someone else build our spirit. You know, if we've had a, a an intimate timing in heaven, and we can share that with somebody, but not know how to help them to get to the same place, then we will leave people frustrated, so we need to be able to say, look, if you build your spirit, if you engage in tongues, if you build that up, if you do this, this will help you to be able to follow this pathway, then you know, we, will, we will be able to take people through it, um, rather than just explaining our sort of involuntary encounters. They have to become voluntary for everyone. We need to be able to step in when we need to and engage. So that's really what it's about. Um, but we want I want to see a Joshua generation raised up. So ideally, anyone who wants to mentor others, when we've got a certain stage into it, we'll be looking to encourage people to go and find people to mentor. Uh, and so they then begin to pass on and actually put the process into practice with somebody else. You know, and learn together to go forward. So, you know, that that's really what it is. But I I'm I'm putting that, uh, I'm going to send that video out in the next couple of days so that everyone can just just see what it is and see what the what the commitment is, you know, really. Um, yeah. You know, because I'd rather have 10 people who are committed than 140 people who are excited to do something but aren't going to actually follow it through. So I want to make sure people are aware of what it is so that those that you know, feel, yeah, I want to do this, we're, we're up front knowing where we're going with it. So, you know. Well, thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome.